Amigos, also we should patron. We're here with Lifeline Whiteout. Now, since we completed If My Heart Had Wings, I'd figure why not do another series? And since I'm using the app, which has a lot of Lifeline games in it, why not just do another Lifeline games? Not series. Because why not? <laughs> Lifeline games are fun to me, and I feel like you guys enjoy them as well, so why not? So, let's get into it. Hello? Mm, buddy? There? Think? Hat? Accident? Pli Help? Hat? Yep? Me? I repeat. And you? It me? Uh, yeah, but there's a ton of static. Lim? Try. Thing. I me. You seconds. Any better? Yeah, much better actually. For some reason, you're the only one I can reach. Even then, only barely. The other frequencies might be scrambled. I'm not exactly sure. There's not a lot of options on this comm device. Listen, I can't waste any time. I don't know who you are or where you are, but I'm putting my life in your hands because my situation isn't looking so hot. In fact, my body temperature is dropping fast in this cold. I could really, really use some help getting out of here. I don't even know where here is. To put it simply, I'm lost and disoriented. What happened? To be honest, I have no idea. The last thing I remember is walking up in the snow. You got him No. Well, that would make sense if he has amnesia because he doesn't remember anything. So where are you? What? No, wait. That also doesn't make sense because he's in the middle of nowhere, he said. Good luck with that. Judging by the temperature, it could be anywhere from Serbia to Alaska. I don't even know my name, let alone my location. The only clues I got are this V. Adams patch on my suit, and then smoking wreck nearby. There's a wrecked snowmobile sticking out of the ice not far away from where I'm standing. That could explain how I got here in the first place. There's also a banged up briefcase nearby. Maybe it's mine? Still, they don't explain why I'm here. Oh, great! This gets even better! I'm standing on a frozen lake! The snowmobile is already halfway through the ice. It's only a matter of time before it stinks. The briefcase doesn't look good either. I doubt its content survived. But since I've got no other options, I guess I should check them out. What do you think? Should I go for the briefcase or the sinking snowmobile? I mean, if you check the sinking snowmobile, and if it seems wrecked, I don't think there's really that much of a good option to go and check it since it's probably doomed from the start. The briefcase could have something useful in it, so it'd be probably better check the briefcase. Alright, I'm gonna grab that briefcase. It doesn't look any better up close. The briefcase's metal casing is bent from the crash, and it's locked. Of course it is. But why? It's not like there are any bandits in this wasteland. Or, well, anyone. Oh, wait a second. I found something interesting. The briefcase has some snow stuck to it. When I brushed it off, I saw a logo. Logo? Oh, well, that means it, it could be some companies, I suppose? Inspect the lock. Always practical, aren't you? I guess it's not important. Well, there's no keyhole, or padlock, or anything like that. It's pretty bare, in fact. Yep, just a simple, everyday steel reinforced briefcase. But, there's a weird knob. Throw the knob, see what the hell happens. Are you sure that's a good idea? What if it's a bomb or something? Then again, it would have exploded after getting dented like that. I can move it either left or right. Left, right, left, right. Sorry. But I heard a click when I moved it. This knob must be the locking mechanism. May I have to turn it in the right sequence? I'm not guessing though. In case you haven't noticed, today isn't my lucky day. So, will you help me choose? I mean, I'm pretty sure if it's a twisting lock mechanism, it will probably act like a combination lock. So, in order to unlock the combination rock, rock, lock, first you need to turn it right. I heard a clicking sound. We're on the right track. Which way now? And then left. Yes, it clicked again. Are you using some secret method? Or is it just a lucky guess? Whatever it is, keep it up! It's not open yet, but we must be close. Which way now? It's actually pretty simple if you've you ever used combination locks, but right this time. Yes! We did it! Time to get my prize! I don't know why I'm so excited about opening a briefcase. Maybe it's because my first success so far. What a treasure trove! There's food inside! I didn't realize how hungry I was. Back in a bit. I'm gonna chow down. 
Yuck! The food was disgustingly tasteless. It wasn't much to begin with. Beef jerky isn't exactly mouth-watering, but it tasted so bland. Either there's something wrong with it, or there's something wrong with my taste buds. At least I have all this snow to wash it down with. And before you ask, no, I didn't eat any yellow snow. Now let's see what else is in here. I found a business card. Dr. W. Sibelius, Biomedical Research and Development. Alt International. That name. I feel like I should know it, but I can't remember. I know it's important. Hey, there's some kind of hidden compartment. What is this? You won't believe this. It's some kind of data storage unit, sealed in a blood-soaked zip bag. But whose blood is this? There's no time to figure that out, just take it. Will do. Give me a sec to pack up. Done! That was quick, jeez. <laughs> this jumpsuit isn't the warmest, but at least it's got plenty of pockets. Okay. I don't want to panic, but there's a helicopter in the distance. It's still pretty far away. I can't even hear the engines over this howling wind. Uh, I think it would be better to lay low, because over the Lifeline games that I have played, it's not always too good, too pretty, when you meet new things or people. So, yeah, probably better to lay low. That may be true, but there's just one problem. I'm standing on a frozen lake, which means there's absolutely no cover. Here goes. Well... I did the best I could, which is to say, I'm lying down, but it's kind of obvious I'm here. Wait, something's not right. The helicopter is veering wildly back and forth. That's not normal. Either the pilot doesn't know what he's doing, or... Wait, there's smoke coming from the engines. It's... It's going down! No! No! <laughs> Don't worry, I'm fine. Can't say the same for that copter, though. It just... plummeted like a rock. And there was a huge explosion just over the hill. I couldn't look away. Like a deer in the headlights. Oh no. Really? I mean, really. Like, all this wasn't enough. More bad news. The explosion was far off. But the ice here is already unstable. The ice cracked. The cracks are spreading. No, no, no. One's heading my way. Don't just stand there. Run! You don't tell me twice! That was close. I'm so glad to be off that lake at last. The helicopter's crash site is a couple miles away. There's a steep hill blocking my view of the wreckage. There's a column of smoke rising behind it. Judging by the color, the copter is probably on fire. I can see something else to my left. Make that my far left. I'm not sure, but I think I see some blinking red lights. It might be a beacon, but I can't tell from the distance. I'll have to get a closer look to know for certain. I can't decide which option is better, or worse. I'm almost sure that's a signal beacon of a relay station, and a station could provide shelter, or a radio. But what if someone survived the crash? What do you think? Well... Well... The people from the copter could have been bad, but they could have been good, and, and if they could have been good, and if one of them is alive, it would be better to help them because they could be most likely injured. But if they were bad, there could be a good possibility that they're dead, and they had supplies with them that we could take, and then go to the beacon place. But the beacon place could be safer because it could have stuff for us to help us. But... The possibility of someone dead, and they could be alive and we could help them, that... And they're all, they could have stuff that we could use as well, that could be helpful for us. I think it'd be good to head for the crash site? I'm not sure that's a good idea. Everything I've seen so far has increased my paranoia. But what if there are survivors? They might be hostile. I won't know their intentions until it's too late. I'm already in enough trouble being stuck out here. I don't even have any weapons to defend myself with. Okay, fine, go towards the light. Never mind, I'm sorry. You don't seem very sure. But your guess is probably as good as mine at this point. I should keep an eye on the time, too. 
I can't spend all day wandering this wasteland. I'll need to find shelter before nightfall. Uh. Uh. Uh, this could be risky. Uh, no. No. I think it's better to keep it. Oh. I don't know. I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna let Google flip a coin and she'll tell me the options. Tails. So, heads is usually the first option of a coin or the first side of a coin. Tails is the last side of the coin or the bottom of a coin, depending on how you look at it. And since the lights are the last option or the second option, I suppose go for the lights? Since that's the safest option? Right. That sounds good to me. I'll orient myself as best as I can in the meantime. The lights are only flashing intermediately. I honestly only notice them by pure chance. It looks like a relay station. There's a small structure beside it. The lights I saw are on top of a large antenna. There's just one problem. It's called, there's a wide, raging river between me and the beacon. I don't see any way to cross. Any ideas? No, 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 no. Swimming across in a very cold environment? You could get hypothermia and die. Let's not risk that. Go for the crash site. You're right. I need to back away. Because it looks like this station could be useful. But it's not worth the risk. I'm heading back. A hike up is... Well... Hard would be an understatement. The merciless terrain exhausts me. And these boots I'm wearing? They weren't designed for climbing. Especially in Arctic conditions. They're not warm either. I wish I had some proper climbing equipment that would make the last stretch easier. But I don't have much choice, now do I? I'm gonna keep moving forward. Or upward in this case. I'm gonna take it slow so I don't slip. Whoa! Speaking of slippery, this upper part is nearly all ice. You can do it. I, I trust in you. I believe. I can. But I'll be careful. I promise. The climb is hard, but worth it. The hilltop is an excellent vantage point. The burning wreck is straight ahead. But I've got another problem. I'm standing on the edge of a steep slope leading down it. It's probably about 70 degrees, if I had to guess. But it's covered in snow. It's hard to tell how deep it is, or if it's covering anything treacherous. But the slope is straight lined to the helicopter. Should I try it? Uh... I mean, it could save you time, yeah. No, we have to think about time here, because... In... Situations like this, when the moon comes out, it can get very colder than what it is. Like in deserts, it's hot when it's, the sun's out. But when the moon's out, it gets cold. So if an Arctic place, if the moon's out, it'll probably be even colder than what it is now. So I think we'll need to save as much time as we can. So it's worth the try, but don't die. You're right. Time is my most precious resource. Still, this will be hard. I'll just test the depth of the snow. Find proper footholds. Wish me luck. Not actually that bad. You just have to be really careful about foot positioning and- oh! I'm alive! Sorry for the scare. As I was finishing the last transmission, the escrows broke apart and my foot fell into a hole. But it wasn't deep enough to keep my leg locked, so I started to fall. I hit my knee hard and I started to slide head first. Then I did a belly flop the rest of the way down. I'm glad it's all over now. I'm lucky I didn't break anything. I bruised my right ankle to knee, but it's fine. The funny thing is, I did save a lot of time. I'm in front of the wreck now. Let's see. Oh my Arceus! There's wreckage everywhere! The helicopter was split wide open! The rotor blade snapped! Like there were just twigs! The engines are on fire, and it's made it into the cockpit! What's left of it? Looks like the fuel tanks were damaged too. That's what's fueling the fires. Damn! They must have hit the hill slide directly. Also, there are two bodies in the cockpit. I can't tell what caused the crash. It's all twisted metal. What were they thinking? Damn. What a waste. And that's where I'm going off the episode. I'm sorry, but I ran out of time. I'd like to thank you all so much for watching. I hope you guys did enjoy. And I'll catch you on the next one. Asta, love you, the baby.